of uh, practical things that we can do to manage stress. Okay, so when I think about stress, I mean, we all have it. In fact, there was that song back in the early 2000s, if you guys can remember. Let's talk about stress, baby. Let's talk about you. Except I didn't use the word stress right there. <laughs> you know, but, you know, when um, Tana talks about, like, mental health is health, our brain is an organ that needs attention and caring just like any other organ in our bodies. I think that there is that stigma when it comes to brain health slash mental health because it's like, oh, I can't see it. Like I don't see the numbers of a high, you know, uh, what is it called when you have uh, high blood pressure? I mean, excuse me, high, well, high blood pressure, yeah. And then also um, for diabetes, yeah, um, you know, we have the A1C, we have like, okay, here's a lab test that shows this. But when you have anxiety, which is um, having a lot of worry and the inability to control your worry um, over the last six months, and that can also go along with being irritable and agitated, and that's usually actually how it shows up for black women, or um, just fidgeting more, having problems with sleeping, or when you have depression, for example, which is a, a period of time if it's a clinical depression, meaning that it's been um, most of the day, nearly every day for at least two weeks when you are either sad, depressed, or hopeless, or actually you may not be sad, you're just not interested in the things that you used to be interested in. How can we uh, intervene and help ourselves? And so the things that we do, it's with the help of the counselors here at Miracosta College and or you know the therapists that you have and some things that you're going to be doing on your own and when I tell you about these stress management strategies if you guys don't have paper in front of you please do write them down because this is like real good shit um, and I'm going to you know recommend that you actually practice them every day why is that because we want to develop these skills and develop almost like a muscle memory for them. When we are under stress, there is less um, activation in our frontal lobe, our frontal parietal network in our brain, and that is the network that helps us with uh, rational problem solving. So this is an issue that I'm having. How do I get through it? You know, what are some other ways to think about this situation? It helps with our emotional control and our impulsivity and our decision making. On MRI studies, it shows that there's actually less blood flow to those areas. So when you're under stress, what's activated? Our limbic system, our emotion mind. And that is like fight, flight, freeze, like, you know, what do I do? And it's not gonna be rational. It's probably not gonna be kind to the people who are causing you stress either. And so when you practice these skills every day, when you're not stressed, it'll give you availability to draw on them when you are. So I'm gonna uh, do three things. I'm gonna talk about mind-based intervention. So, you know, controlling your thoughts. These thoughts can be what we call stinking thinking under the case of anxiety, depression, or stress. Um, Body-based interventions and also spirit. So let's talk about the mind. Uh, the main way that I try to teach people to control your thoughts or manage thinking thinking is called the three R's. And I don't have a trademark yet, but I did make it up. Um, and so those three R's are redirect, reframe, and recognize or accept. Okay, redirect. So the first thing that you can do when you're having a lot of swirling thoughts is put your mind on something else. That can be a distraction. So like scrolling through social media, it's not necessarily a bad thing as long as your algorithm is good, okay? Because if your algorithm, algorithm is gonna bring up more depressive stuff or political stuff, then that's not helpful. So you might look at some things that bring you joy. For me, it's watching nature documentaries. It might be for you watching a comedy or something like that. Something that will get your mind outside of your internal experience. Something else is called grounding skills. And grounding skills is what you will learn with the help of your uh, counselor. And it's so amazing. It's actually uh, rooted in PTSD treatment. And what it does is it focuses your attention on the outside world 
to give you space temporarily, to give you some distance between, uh, from your inner world of negative experiences. So you look around and you're using all five senses. Look around and notice what you see. I'll teach you a quick rounding exercise. Five, four, three, two, one. Five. Look around, notice what are you what are you saying? Five things that you're saying. So I see a blue chair that's probably plastic and it has holes in the back of it. I'm not sure if you guys can see the chairs on, online. Yes, you can. Okay, and then I see um well, myself in the camera, hey, <laughs> it's a little flawish because of the lighting, but, um, you know, what are five things that you see? Name it without judgment, like, oh, I see this ugly picture back of, no, 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 just what is it, okay? Four things that you can feel, okay, what are four things that you can feel? I can feel the temperature of the AC, it's actually comfortable, thank goodness, because I wasn't sure if I needed to put much of later today. I can feel the fabric on my skin. I can feel, you're going to pick up an object, I can feel the tint. I notice the weight. I notice the temperature. I notice the texture. Four things that you can feel. What are three things that you can hear? Tune in. And I'm actually going to get some audience engagement right now. What are three things that you can hear? My voice. What else can you hear? People talking outside. Yes, you might be able to hear the HVAC system. What are three things that you can hear? Two things that you can smell. What are two things that you can smell? Yes, stuff works. <laughs> Whoops, you know, what are two things that you can smell? And then one, come on in, get some snacks. One thing that you're grateful for. Okay, and I'm going to talk about uh, gratitude later in the spirit section. But there's so much information about positive psychology and the role of gratitude in helping our mood and helping our stress level and so many other things. You can guys can look it up on Google Scholar later. But just one thing that I'm grateful for today. And sometimes it's so much stress going on that you're like, I, I mean, I guess I'm grateful about the life. You know, it, it could be very hard. But I'm glad that I'm moving on my own. Something. All right. Can I interrupt you for a second? There's okay. one comment I want to make sure that you got before we yeah. move on. Uh, Dr. Wendy says, it's such a great point. I noticed my TikTok, TikTok algorithm pulls in lots of social justice videos and videos on racism. So watching video after video can really weigh me down. Amen. Yes. And so for me, sometimes when, when we do have the algorithm, you know, okay, well, I need for my own peace of mind. I need to like not uh, not uh, have that input right now because you know as part of our our psychological safety we will need breaks from that. Yes, we want social justice, and yes, we want um, to be able to like be activists and those sorts of things. But none of us are superhuman and stop trying. Okay, so giving yourself that break. The second thing was the reframe. What is a different way than I can look at this? Okay, so maybe you're thinking about um, that person who cut you off in traffic. I used to teach veterans and I bring this up like, okay, so what's, what's your immediate thought when somebody cuts you off on a freeway and then start driving real slow? What's your thought? <laughs> your what ifs to an even if. And then think about the power that you have. What if I fail this exam? 
even if I fail this exam, I'm going to do extra credit. I'm going to explain to the professor that, look, it was just, I got a lot going on. And, you know, X, Y, Z, even if whatever doesn't work out, I know that I can handle it. And how do I know this? Because I've made it through 100% of my bad days so far. What is to even this? And then the last thing is, think about what went right today. Because so often when we do have stress, anxiety, depression, our minds typically and naturally go to everything that went wrong. In fact, it's something called confirmation bias, where if we do have a negative thought, like I'm not good enough, that person doesn't like me, then our brains will look for evidence to confirm that. So we actually have to be intentional to reverse that and be like, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. Third thing, recognize and accept. Sometimes we just got too much serotonin, um, excuse me, too little serotonin, too much GABA is the uh, biochemistry that's just off. We just don't have anxiety, period. So when that is the case, we recognize that and accept it. But what we do is we treat that anxiety, we treat those sinking thoughts like the ticker, ticker tape at the bottom of the screen. You, have, you guys remember the ticker tape if you're watching the Weather Channel or something like that, like Headline News? But the main presentation, the main view, is going to be what is in my control today. What can I do today in this moment? And may this be one thing at a time. And focus your main perspective on that. Okay? Let's go to body-based interventions. And I know this is pretty going pretty quickly, but you guys can watch the replay later. First of all, breathe. I've been loud on breathing like I wouldn't be here if I wasn't breathing. But are you doing the healing breath? The healing, the cleansing breath. That's what this is what that looks like. I want you to put one hand on your belly and take a breath. Take a deep breath. Did that hand on your belly move? Or did the you know your chest move? Right? <laughs> If you can inhale, and you inhale through your nose as if like you're smelling a bouquet of roses if you're not allergic, or like your favorite food, inhale through your nose and press out against the hand that's on your belly. What that does is it activates our body's diaphragm. Our diaphragm muscle is directly connected to our body's relaxation system, which is the parasympathetic nervous system. When we activate it and exercise that muscle, it actually helps to calm down everything. It lowers levels of cortisol and adrenaline, stress hormones. It helps to lower levels of inflammation in our body. It helps us to even control our blood sugar. It is so important. It's part of the parasympathetic nervous system, again, and the vagus nerve activation. So again, breathe in through your nose, pushing out that belly, and then when you exhale, Breathe out through her split. So we show y'all what that looks like. Wait. Okay, the lighting is bad, but like, like you're breathing through a straw. Okay, breathing out through a straw. And why do we do that instead of just like, <sighs> because when you breathe out through her split, it lets you to control the exhale. And when you have a very long exhale again, that is what is relaxing. So you breathe in for three, breathe out for six, seven, eight, nine. And that is the healing breath. So practice that with me, you guys. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. How many guys sing? Good, bad, ugly. How many guys sing? Sing, hum. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I guess I want you guys to hum right now. So hum, like mm, or um. Oh, she got the tunes. Oh. So, do you notice? Put your hand right here when you're humming, right here at the bottom of your throat. Do you notice that vibration there? That vibration also activates our body's vagus nerve. It activates the relaxation system. So, when you're feeling stressed out, when your family, when your partner, when your professor is stressing you out, in the name of, okay, <laughs> and it's going to calm you down. All right, another thing is tapping. 
there's a couple different toppings. One is emotional freedom technique. Yes, I see you, girl. You know, emotional freedom technique tapping. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Another one is bilateral tapping. So bilateral tapping is basically bilateral. One side of the body does the other. So you can be in class or in a meeting and just tap one foot and tap the other. They don't even know what you're doing. Just make sure you do it slow. Because when you do it fast, that's what they do at uh, EMDR, trauma treatment. And that's going to activate the trauma in your brain. So we're going to do it slowly. And that's going to help you relax. This is why people who have anxiety, they pace back and forth. Because that bilateral tapping helps to relax you and it integrates the different parts of our brains so that we can problem solve and think better. Do that. I'm not going to take off my shoes because I got some issues with my toes. But <laughs> do that in the grass. Do that barefoot because not only does it help with the bilateral tapping and then the relaxation, but that barefoot in the dirt helps good bacteria go up to your gut. And gut health is mental health. Okay? So that is really important. Let's do some EFT tapping. And so I'm going to show you guys where you're tapping on different parts of your face and your uh, collarbone. And what this does is it, it's similar to acupressure points, and it taps into your brain's meridian energy points so that you can connect your head and your heart with whatever's going on. So you may know that you'll be okay in a situation, but you're still pretty bad. Or you're still like, I don't quite believe it. Like, I, I know logically, but my heart is like, yeah, you still need to work. The EFT tapping is going to help you connect head and heart so that you can actually believe what you're saying. So everyone here in person and here on the Zoom, I want you to think about what problem that you have. It could be an upcoming assignment. It could be some family responsibilities. I want you to think about that. I'm going to put down the microphone so that I can demonstrate to you guys. And as you're thinking about that problem, now I want you to tell you what you know to be true. Maybe you don't know to be true. I'm going to tell you what's true. I'm a masterpiece. I can handle this. I'm enough. And that's what we're going to say at each of these points, okay? So just follow along. Okay, so top of the head. Whatever, whatever phrase you need right now, I'm just going to go with the I am enough. I'm enough. I'm enough. And so for you guys who um, I didn't uh, explain, it's the first two fingers. Okay? And five to seven, five to seven at each of these points. Okay? And then right above the eyebrows, I'm enough. I've always been enough. I'll always be enough. My value is just an existence. I'm enough. I don't care. No, nobody's saying it. <laughs> I am enough. I am enough. I am enough. Yes, right. Under the eyes, it's a little harder when you have on glasses. How about I can handle this? I can handle this. I can handle this. Right above the lip at the mustache line. I can handle this. I can handle this. I can handle this. Right below at the chin, I'm enough. I can handle this. Let's take it a step further. I am a masterpiece. I am a masterpiece. Right here at your collarbone, I'm enough. I can handle this. I am a masterpiece. Okay, and then some people do like under their arms, we're not gonna do all that. But what I want you to do now is Put your thumb on your wrist and squeeze down at that acupressure point. Take a deep breath and as you exhale, say peace. Peace. And I want you to repeat this for five to 10 minutes. Repeat this until you start believing what you just told yourself, okay? And again, these strategies we practice every day. Day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is nutrition for your brain, okay? Lastly, spirit. And spirit, I don't necessarily mean a religious context, but what brings you meaning? What brings you purpose, meaning, and joy? Tapping into those things, leaning into those things. So, Tama mentioned community. 
Do you have healthy community? Healthy meaning good boundaries, and boundaries mean I'm loving you and loving me at the same time. Do you have people that you can be around where your energy is lifted instead of those energy vampires? Noticing those spaces where you can just be completely yourself. That is how we nurture our spirits. Finding places where you have harmony, where you feel pleasure, whether that be places, activities, journaling, whatever. And then also, again, gratitude again, because it's going to make a difference in your biochemistry, your brain, your mood, and everything. And so that's it for me. I'm going to.